Hallelujah. God, we commit our spirit into your hands for you have redeemed us, O oh Lord God of truth. Psalms 31 and 5. Spirit, soul, and body. God, we surrender to you right now. Our time, Lord God, we surrender it to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You said in Daniel 2 and 21, you're the God that changes seasons and times. You said in Malachi 3 and 6, I am the Lord and I change not. You declared in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord God, you've not changed throughout time. Time has not changed you. The culture has not changed you. God, men, even in high places, even in offices of government, Lord God, have sought out to change the truth of God and make it into a lie. Therefore, worshiping the creature rather than the creator, which is blessed forever and ever. Amen, as Romans 1, 25 declares. Man has tried to change your truth, but your truth has not changed. And your truth will change the men if they'll believe in that truth that is absolute. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that time is not changed you, but you can change the times. God, I thank you that the seasons have not changed you, but you can change the seasons. I thank you, God, that man has not changed you. You're still God. Hallelujah. And if man will believe, man can be changed. You can not only change us, but you can change the things that concern us. But you said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, in the word of the Lord, behold, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Holy Ghost, we welcome you today to come and rearrange us, change us, turn us inside out, because that's all a miracle is, is a mess. Turn inside out. Come, Holy Ghost. You said in 1 Samuel 10 and 6, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. He prophesied with them and was turned, changed into another man. Holy Ghost, when you come, for truly you alone are the Spirit of Christ, my son. You are the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Him, Hallelujah that put Jesus the Christ inside of a virgin womb over 2,000 years ago for in Luke 1, 34, Mary said how can this be seeing that I know not a man and Holy Ghost the angel answered her in verse 35 and said you the Holy Ghost would come upon you and the power of the old highest shall overshadow thee and that holy thing that will be conceived in your womb shall be called the son of the most high God. Holy Ghost you did a physical supernatural sign and wonder upon the virgin womb of a teenage girl named Mary. Hallelujah, Lord. It was by your spirit. It was by the spirit of Christ himself, the Holy Ghost in his power that this event took place. The miraculous nativity of Christ Jesus. And Holy Spirit, you're no different now than you were then. You're still touching mortal flesh. You're still touching bodies. You're still healing sicknesses and diseases. You're still Lord God, changing and reversing things in the flesh and in the body. When you said in Jeremiah 32 and 27, Behold, I'm the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? God, I thank you today. You're not only the God of all spirit. You've made our spirits, but you're also still the God of all flesh. You don't just do spiritual things, though that's the most high, that's the most important. But Lord God, you still affect and you still change the flesh. You still touch Lord God our bodies. You still touch our physical and I thank you Holy Ghost we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to be touched in our bodies. We don't have to wait. Lord that'd be like telling somebody to wait till they get to heaven to be saved. It just won't happen. Lord you said in your word hallelujah that we have promise in this life and also in the life that is to come. First Timothy 4 and verses 7. So Holy Ghost we don't just have promise of the everlasting life in the sweet by and by. We have promises right here in the nasty now. Lord, there's things you want to do in the earth. Lord, and I pray as you did in Matthew chapter 6. Lord God, you declared in verses 12, God, let your kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Ain't nobody sick in heaven this morning. Ain't nobody bound with demons in heaven this morning. Ain't nobody wanting to kill themselves in heaven this morning. Ain't nobody bound up, yoked up, tied up by no Satan no devil in heaven this morning. Everybody's free. And I thank you, Holy Ghost, right here, right now. Lord God, as we celebrate Christ in his miraculous nativity, his birth through the power and the anointing of the person and power of the Holy Ghost, that God, you're still working in the earth by that same spirit of Christmas who is Holy Ghost. You're still doing signs and wonders. You're still saving. 
You're still changing lives. You're still altering lives at your altar. Hallelujah. You're no different now. You said in the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if he dwell in you, shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Romans chapter 8 verses 11. Not some different spirit, not some different Holy Ghost, but same Holy Ghost. I thank you that you're the same Holy Ghost. You're the same one that came on Mary's body and did this miracle and brought Jesus into this world. Hallelujah. Thank you. And you're still the same Holy Ghost that can come on our bodies today. Lord God and heal us. Make us whole. Change everything that concerns us. Holy Ghost, I thank you for tradition but Lord I come absent in my mind of traditions. Lord God I think outside of my mind right now and I want to step into the spirit because I don't want to have Lord God necessarily Father God uh, just any type of thought that's just bound up with tradition because of this time of the year because so many preachers get trapped in tradition and you said in your word of Matthew chapter 15 and verses 6 that we make the commandments of God of none effect through our traditions nothing wrong with traditions uh, God they're designed to help us to remember things uh, but sometimes Lord we get trapped in those traditions uh, and we hinder and we make none effect uh, we cause your word to be unaffected uh, because of it thereof so Holy Ghost we don't follow tradition we follow the truth today. We want to hear what it is you've got to say in the mighty name of Jesus. We don't necessarily seek, uh, Lord God, for the sense of a meeting, uh, the sense of a season, but we come now wanting the mind of the Spirit. There's a difference. Lord, we don't want just the sense of some meeting that's seasonal. We want the mind of the Spirit for you. Set in your word in 1 Corinthians 2, 16. We have the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit, we want our mind on what it is that saith the word of God. For you, Son of Proverbs 15 and 23, a word spoken in due season. How good is it? And Solomon the wisest man didn't ask a question. There was no question mark after that. There was an exclamation mark as with excitement, enthusiasm. He declared out a word spoken from God in a due season at the right time. How good is it? He proclaimed it. It's good. And Holy Ghost, we want that word. We need that word now. You said your angel spirits hearken unto the voice of your word. Psalms 103, 20. Your word that's written is your voice. You reveal yourself unto Samuel at Shiloh by the words of the Lord. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 21. If we want to know God, if we want to hear God, we got to read God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. You said in Revelation 19 and 13, He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and His name is called the Word of God. Jesus, you are Genesis through Revelation. We're not here for some bedtime story. We're not here for just some quote-unquote traditional story seasonal Christmas story. No, Lord God, we're not here for just uh, uh, some history lesson. Uh, Lord, history is His story. It's His story that's now, that was then, that is, and is to come. For Jesus Christ who was, uh, is Jesus Christ who is, uh, and will be Jesus Christ to come. I give you praise. In all dispensations of time past, uh, present, and future, you are Jesus Christ. Uh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 and Lord, we don't want to speak as the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, for they could elaborate eloquently upon the letter of the law, but they had no spirit. They had no Holy Ghost. And Lord, you said in Matthew 7 and 29, this is one of the things that offended the Pharisees, the religious leaders in Christ's day when he walked the earth. They said, he speaks as one with authority. He spake not as the Pharisees, but as one with authority. He spake as one with power. Hallelujah. You said in Luke 4, 32, they were astonished at his doctrine because his word was with power. Hallelujah. Lord, when you spake, there was power. When you spake, it was by the Holy Ghost. It was not just something learned out of some cemetery. I mean, seminary room. Lord God, some place of death where man was educating each other, ever learning but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 3, 7. No, Lord Jesus, you spake by the Holy Ghost. That's why demons were leaving while they were, they were screaming while they were leaving. Lord God, that's why the sick got up off of their sick beds. Lord God, that's why the dead were raised. That's why the lost were found. Signs and wonders showed up. Because Jesus, you spoke by the Spirit. You didn't have the sense of the season. You had the mind of the Spirit. Holy Ghost, you were there in the words he was saying with power. That's why lives were altered and changed. And I thank you, you're no different now than you were then. You still possess vessels that are yield to you and with same Holy Ghost power. 
Signs and wonders are issued forth. Hallelujah. In the midst of those that believe. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you're about to do. Do as Mary did that long time ago. In Luke 1 38, after the angel told her she was going to have a baby and see by the Holy Ghost, her reply was just simply, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed. Come on, somebody, somebody say, the angel left her. Praise God. Where'd the angel go? He was like, girlfriend, I'm glad you finally said, be it unto me. Because when you said, Lord, I accept what you just prophesied and promised, now I can go back to heaven and get the answer and bring it back down and manifest it in the earth in your body. 